Hello and welcome to a new game from CCC 11's round 2. Here are the final standings of the competition because round 2 ended. And after 48 games each, Leela is first, 3 points ahead of Stockfish. T60 Leela is in third. And as far as I know, the first 6 finishers uh, advanced to round 3. Now, I'm, I'm not sure if Baby Leela. Uh, T60 Lila was uh, competing officially for any of these places. I think not. So that means that Scorpio, who finished here in 7th, and everyone above Scorpio qualified for round 2. So Fire and Stoflays are out of the tournament. Now let's see today a game played between Lila and Scorpio. We have an English opening with C4, E5, Knight C3, Knight F6. And now white attacks the spawn on e5, and instead of defending, black pushes the spawn forward. But now after knight g5, the spawn is uh, hard to defend as d5 is met with c takes on d5. But in this game, we have a gambit with b5, and um, this is called the Ballon Gambit. This is where the book ends now. Black's idea is that after the pawn takes here, he can defend uh, this uh, pawn on e4, and he has a, a good center. So what can um, Y do here? Well, first of all, if he takes here, then after knight takes, knight takes, black can take on, on c4 and the d5 is coming again. Uh, after something like this, uh, black has a, a good uh, influence in the center. So this is not so great for white. Instead of knight e4, he can maybe try c takes on b5, but then again, d5 comes. So this is not good either. Knight b5 is also not good because now h6 is good for black when uh, this knight can't take here. It is, it is forced into this uh, awkward h3 square. And now after c6 pushing this knight back, black can again get in d5 and he again has a, a good center. So none of these options are really good for white. Here in, after b5, the best is d3. Trying to maintain a pawn in the center but also to open up the d file and uh, put pressure on uh, on the d-pawn. So here now, if b takes on c4, then white can, takes on, um, white can take on e4, and the d5 is stopped, and e5 is coming, and at some point this bishop can maybe pick up this pawn, so this would be good for, for white. Instead, we have e takes on d3, so Scorpio takes here, but Lila now takes on b5. And her idea now is that with the d-file opened up, uh, this d pawn again could come under pressure. For example, if, if pawn takes here, then after bishop e2, white is uh, ahead in development and he's threatening bishop f3, hitting this rook. So black has to play bishop b7, but now after castles, rook e1 could come quickly with some uh, serious threats here. So black also has to speed up and uh, try to castle quickly, but white can now continue with bishop f3, hitting this bishop. And if black plays here now d5, then uh, now rook e1 is met with castles, but white can build pressure now on the d5 or against the pawn with queen b3. And after castles with rook d1. And uh, this pawn is hard to defend, c6, again b takes on c6. So this is Lila's idea. If instead of pawn takes here, uh, Scorpio would continue with d5, then after queen takes, again, this pawn is uh, under pressure. The main line actually comes with h6, first pushing this knight back to f3, and now pawn takes, and after bishop e2, uh, the bishop can't really come uh, to this uh, diagonal, and now black can play bishop c5 or something, bishop b7, and uh, continue the game. So, after c takes on b5 here by Lila, we have a6 now, gambiting another pawn, we have e4, this is a very good move, because... Uh, Lila now intends to pick this up with the bishop maybe and and uh, e5 is threatened here so uh, also d5 is not so easy to get in now so uh, e4 a good move we have now h6 knight back to f3 a takes on b5 and now bishop takes on d3 since uh, b4 was threatened winning this pawn we have bishop takes on d3 and now after b4 we have knight b5 c6 and now knight d4 d6 castles bishop e7 and now queen c2 attacking the spawn scorpio defends with queen b6 and now we have a4 she has now a 
passed pawn, which maybe could become a protected passed pawn at some point. And uh, if black takes here, then after rook takes, rook takes, and pawn takes, Lila still has here this um, outside passed pawn, which could be very, very useful in an endgame. Instead of taking on a3, Scorpio castled, and now we have h3, rook d8, bishop f4, c5, hitting the knight again, knight b5, bishop e6, and this bishop is in a nice diagonal here. And here, e5 may be an idea for, for Lila, but she's not hurried. She saw a way to, uh, to improve her uh, pieces and played knight d2, intending knight c4, hitting this queen. And if this bishop takes, then if the bishop takes, white's bishop would be very, very strong on that diagonal. We have knight c6, and after knight c4, we have queen back to b8. Of course, Scorpio is uh, not uh, capturing this knight. We have rook d1, and Lila is mounting pressure against d6. There are already three pieces attacking it, and after something like bishop e2, there could be a fourth. So Scorpio came up here with knight d4, and after knight takes and pawn takes, uh, Lila played here queen e2, intending e5 so that the light square bishop can uh, take a look at the uh, black's king side. We have knight d7 now and e5. And here, if uh, a Scorpio takes this pawn, then there will be a lot of exchanges, which uh, don't really help black. As, as I mentioned, Lila has the outside pass pawn. They both have a pass pawn, but this one is easier to stop by uh, Lila's king than uh, the a pawn, which is very, very far away from, from the king. So if all the pieces come off, then the a pawn would win the game here for Lila. Outside pass pawns, very, very dangerous. But instead of uh, taking here, Scorpio wanted to win that pawn, and he took out this knight now. But after bishop takes on c4, remember this uh, diagonal could be dangerous. We have now d takes on e5, winning this pawn, but f7 is weak, and instead of uh, removing this bishop, Lila played queen h5, attacking f7. And black doesn't have many good options here. First of all, rook f8 is just too passive, defending this pawn. Uh, Lila could win now h6, actually. Uh, black would have to continue with bishop f6 here. Taking this bishop is just uh, game over after queen g6. Since the pawn is uh, pinned after king here, queen check, king back, uh, Lila has a winning move here. Pause the video if you'd like to find uh, the best move here for white. It's a typical maneuver, a typical attacking maneuver. So it helps to know these things. So here Lila can win with rook d3, transferring the rook to g3 and uh, killing that king. So rook f8 is, is too passive. Another option would be queen d6 to defend this bishop. And then after queen f7 check, uh, this bishop is not hanging and Lila would be forced to uh, move away the bishop. But Scorpio preferred to uh, take here this bishop. And now after queen f7 check, winning a pawn, Lila takes on e7. And they exchange a pair of bishops, which could be in White's benefit at some point. We have now knight e5 hitting that bishop, bishop b5, and suddenly this uh, pawn is under attack, so Scorpio played queen d6, but now there are more exchanges now. We have bishop d3 now to, to block this pawn, g5, and now king f1, and rook e8, preventing this king from approaching those pawns. We have rook c1 going to the open file, king g7, and now rook c7 check, king f6, and now bishop b5 hitting this rook. Scorpio played here rook g8, but this now allowed Lila to advance the pawn up to a6. And on a6, the pawn is already dangerously close to the touchdown zone. It's very, very dangerous to, uh, to push these, uh, these pass pawns because uh, you can easily lose them. So uh, when one has a, a passed pawn or a protected passed pawn, uh, one has to uh, consider well the moment when uh, he launches this pawn because it could be lost. But here now after a5, Lila has everything under control because if uh, rook b8, then uh, rook c5 is good. And if uh, rook d5, as in the game, 
then rook b7 defends the bishop and the pawn can go to a6 we have now rook g7 attacking the defender of the bishop so we have rook b6 check king f5 and now a6 and this pawn is very very close now to a8 we have d3 counter attacking rook a1 and lila is threatening big stuff here with the pawn but scorpio counter attacks with d2 uh, rook a7 instead blocking the pawn would also uh, be a move but uh, it would be a bit too passive we have d2 but now after rook d1 uh, lila evaluates this already at plus one and scorpio agrees this pawn is um, is hard to defend and now since it, it advanced to, to d2 the e2 square became available to um, one of white's pieces we have now rook c7 intending to come down to c1 f3 to stop any kind of uh, f3 moves by uh, black since uh, lila wants to put something on, on e2 we have h5 now b3 g4 and we have now bishop e2 defending f3 defending the rook and also allowing this rook to attack b4 we have pawn takes pawn takes and now rook d4 defending here h4 and now rook a7 blocking the pawn and here white's idea is to play rook b7 and uh, force this rook back and then get in also a7 bring that pawn closer to uh, the queening square but instead of rook b7 lila first tried some other stuff here with the rook we have rook b6 and then rook b8 and then the rook will also attack this pawn force the king back and now eventually the rook goes to, to b7 we have rook a8 and now bishop b5 an interesting move which allows the knight to take on f3 here but uh taking on f3 is not great because then lila would have this rook b6 check uh, clearing this diagonal and after the king moves bishop c6 now would win one of these pieces so knight f3 is uh, not good instead we have king f6 and now a7 and at this point they both evaluate the position at plus two pretty much winning here for white we have king f5 and now king e2 the king uh, came closer now to uh, looking over the spawn and protect the queening square also protect f3 we have now king e6 and rook a1 and here now black has a couple of uh, ideas he could uh, maybe queen this pawn and after rook takes rook takes king takes take on f3 but this fails again because of rook b6 check and bishop c6 winning one of these pieces so that pawn on f3 is not really hanging a better try instead of uh, giving up the pawn like this would be to take now on f3 when this king is a bit overloaded it has to guard both uh, the queening square and the attack f3 but here white also has a winning idea here with rook a6 check and now if the the rook blocks then uh, bishop d7 is very good and now if the king goes here then after uh, bishop h3 check these squares are taken away and uh, black loses the rook or if the king comes up then there's this check and then rook takes and again bishop c6 wins here for white or if after rook a6 instead of blocking the king comes here which is the best move then rook e7 forces the king anyway to a lie square and here the rook has to uh, sack itself otherwise it's mate and um, here again uh, bishop c6 check is uh, the killing blow after king c5 uh, white can't take yet any of these pieces because then the spawn promotes but after the simple king d1 these two pieces are uh, still attacked and uh, black loses so none of these options are, are really good instead we have rook g8 intending to uh, bother the white king but now we have rook g7 using tactics uh, if the rook takes there then the pawn promotes of course we have rook back to a8 and now king d1 finally blocking this pawn and this now allows lila's rook to to do some damage we have rook back to d8 and now bishop e2 defending the spawn we have now rook d7 trying a, a rook exchange rook a6 check rook d6 rook a4 now attacking the spawn rook c8 and there's a threat 
of mate in one here so the rook comes back rook d8 and now rook b7 attacking that pawn again rook c1 check they exchange a pair of rooks here scorpio gave up that pawn we have rook a8 king d2 king d5 and in this position now lila gives up the a7 pawn in order to win b4 and f4 we have rook takes on b4 rook takes on a7 and now rook takes on f4 knight g6 hitting the rook but now after rook a4 this pawn is defended by the rook so if scorpio wants to to have a chance at least it has to win one pawn at least since uh, lila is two pawns up so he exchanged the rooks here and uh, now he can take on on h4 but first the king goes to the queen side to to pick up the pawn. we have king e3 and now knight takes on h4 finally f4 knight f5 check king e4 knight d6 check king e5 and now h4 a5 98 a6 king b6 and the king will uh, eventually pick up this pawn so lila has to be careful not to to lose this pawn to a knight check or something because then the game would end in a draw we have bishop h5 hitting the knight knight g7 and now bishop g4 uh, dominating the knight and um, soon asking some uh, very important questions from the knight if the king takes here then uh, king f6 forces the knight to e8 and then after king e7 the knight has to to make some important decisions here which way to go well there's only one way uh, which is good if it comes here then it gets trapped after king f7 and there are no tricks here with uh, with h3 because lila can just take that king and after h2 the bishop can come back to f3 in time to uh, stop the pawn and this one will become a queen so uh, the knight has to go this way but then f5 simply and uh, the knight can give some checks but eventually it will be forced away from the pawn and uh, then uh, the pawn can uh, march safely up the board so instead of king takes on a6 here we have h3 scorpio gives up the pawn then he takes on a6 but now bishop back to g4 and we have the same situation as before king b6 and now king f6 knight e8 and uh, king e7 knight c7 bishop e6 and uh, the knight can't really get close uh, to the pawn uh, d6 is taken away knight b5 and now f5 knight d4 f6 and here a tricky move now knight f3 white has to be very very careful here not to push this pawn because then the knight can jump to e5 and attack it and if allowed to take it next move and the game would end in a draw and the uh, queening the pawn doesn't help because of this check and then uh, knight takes here and it's a draw and if white uh, promotes to a knight well then he doesn't have enough material to win the game so lila has to be careful so instead of f7 she played king d6 here to take away the square we have knight g5 and now bishop d5 again again taking away squares from that knight and now king e5 and uh, king f5 is the threat we have king b5 king e5 king c5 and now bishop a2 maintaining the bishop on this diagonal king c6 king f5 knight a7 and now f7 and the knight now has to guard the f8 square king g6 is coming so the knight jumped to f8 we have king f6 now and now king d6 so that after king g7 the king can defend the knight from e7 but it doesn't matter because at this point black is in Tsukswang or at least will be very very soon the winning plan is to place the bishop on this diagonal and take away these squares from both the king and the knight and uh, with all these squares unavailable to the black pieces if the king moves away from the knight of course then this one will be lost and if instead the knight moves then uh, the bishop will take the knight and then uh, lila will promote this pawn and there's nothing to do at this point we have bishop c4 lila implementing this plan knight d7 bishop d3 and now after knight back to f8 we have bishop f5 and uh, this is the moment where scorpio gave up the knight but from here on it's now very easy we have a new queen and then the inevitable sacrifice of the bishop 
and then a mate with the queen and the king. A very nice game again, played by Lila. I would like to thank to Jimmy Thomas and Guilherme Lima de Carvalho for their contribution. And I would also like to thank to René, Adolf, uh, Jimmy, Barry and everyone else. Visit the store and check out two of my other videos here on the right. Please subscribe, like and share. And um, see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.